Hello everybody, my name is Will, and welcome back to Fly Out once again! Gotta get that energy in there! Smack that like and the subscribe button! Yeah! Yeah! I could kill God! Um, welcome back. <laughs> Today, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a parasol winged uh, fighter. So, uh, in the last flyout video where I built something, uh, not the last flyout video, that was a community designs episode. Another one of those will be coming very soon uh, because, good lord, that's a lot of community submissions that I got since the last video. So, I've really got something to catch up on there. So, don't worry about that. That will also be happening very soon. So, if you did submit something, you'll have a chance soon to get to get him on those videos. Apologies. Uh, right. Yes. Parasol Winged Fighter. Last building video, we built the Cardinal, which was a gull winged and subsequently low winged, because I built two versions of it, plane. Uh, it was a World War II or interwar design, designed to kind of look a little bit like the Westland Wizard. Um, which, if you haven't heard of it before, is just insanely cool. I, I, I'd never heard of it, and then I found it and I was like, wow, I like that. Um, Prototype never built in large numbers, so that's probably why we've never heard of it before. Uh, regardless, I was very inspired by that and I built this thing and uh, I asked you uh, in the community tab, would you rather like to see me develop the low wing or the high wing version of this plane? And now a lot of people picked low wing and a couple of people picked high wing, but the vast majority of you picked the third option which I added which was uh, both. So some people took that to mean biplane. What I actually meant by that is I'm going to make two videos. Uh, well, I, it wasn't going to be two videos, uh, and then I had literally no time this week. Um, and I just, I just, I'm going to upload something. Because <laughs> otherwise you'd get nothing. So you're getting this. You're getting one half of this two-part thing. The other half will come at some point. Uh, do not ask me for a timeline. I do not have one. <laughs> Um, but yes, two parts, uh, and this this is the first one. Uh, we are going to be building a gull-winged aircraft, because the parasol wing comes with a lot of struts. You, you really need to strut it to the fuselage a lot, and that causes a lot of parasitic drag. Parasitic? Is that the word? Not sure. Uh, I'm not an aerodynamicist. Um, however, uh, long story short, I know it's good if you get rid of that. So... Um, I have reduced that by making it a gullwing, so that now connects directly to the fuselage. The uh, connecting, you know, spars can now run inside the fuselage and add strength to the wings without external spars, which add more drag than the other way around. That does mean that the wing is lower, and that means that downwards visibility for the pilot is worse. But what it does mean is you have a more in, an, in more uninterrupted view upwards which is good if you're in a fighter uh, and you need to see anybody coming for you uh, and also it means we can go faster uh, so combined with the lower drag we've also put in a new engine so the previous engine produced approximately not exactly 800 ish horsepower 800 850 range this is modeled closer to be uh, Merlin-esque performance. Uh, I was specifically looking at the Spitfire 2 series uh, of aircraft for my comparison point uh, in terms of horsepower. Uh, so that's about where I'm looking, where you should be thinking for the performance of this thing. Um, and yeah, uh, it, it, it kind of... Uh, it should feel that era, if that makes sense. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the visuals of it are, are mostly done, I will admit at this point. Uh, I'm mostly playing around with just fine-tuning the little details that I really wanted to do. Uh, and also, I did do a livery for this thing. Uh, I'm not going to include too much of uh, actually painting this thing up because, uh, well, I'll explain why in a bit, but I, I kind of go back on the changes I made, so you'd just be watching me do something that then doesn't actually get into the final cut. Um, and then... Finally, I decided that this thing as a fighter in early World War II wouldn't be hugely practical, but let's just go with the idea that they already had a bunch of these airframes lying around, and they may as well just finish them up, up and get them into the sky and use them for the best thing that they have available to them. So in this case, what I've done is I've strapped a couple bombs uh, to the wings and one under the central fuselage and moved the radiator forward to accommodate that central fuselage bomb, and now it's like a light fighter bomber thing. So... 
I think that's pretty cool. I'm doing a lot of hand gestures right now, and none of you can see any of them, so that makes me stupid. Um, but yeah, I, I, this is one of my favorite little fuselages I've ever made. You can see me here. I'm adding a little ridge where the paint can end uh, and, and the bottom of the plane can begin. I, I, th I genuinely think I, I've, I've done a good job with this one, and I hope you agree as well, uh, because we're pretty much there after I do this uh, elevator. Do you like it? Please tell me you like it. I like it. Uh, <laughs> it's goofy. It is It is a bit silly. Um, but, but isn't that the best way for things to be? Maybe. Uh, right, back to past me. <laughs> and so here we have the upgraded version of the Cardinal. Now, I think this is looking quite a lot nicer. Now, I, I would... I would load up the, the, the old one to compare, uh, but it turns out if you go save as rather than load aircraft, which it's, you know, they're right next to each other, uh, this menu here and this save button look oddly like the load aircraft menu. Um, so I went in here and uh, I, I, I went autopilot, save as, selected the plane, save, before realizing... I was in the wrong menu. Uh, so, um, the other version's gone. <laughs> and I'm still reeling from that a little bit. But, you know, we're, we're gonna soldier on here. Um, oh, man. Oh, dear. Okay, right. Camouflage is green. I really tried with the livery designer. I spent a long time designing a livery. Uh, and I got... I think I think this autosave is is the one with the livery. I got this far, and then I just the green wasn't right, and so in order to get the green right, I'd have to just start over. <laughs> so forgive me. I got the green right. I much prefer this green, and the brown I have also looks pretty good on here. However, I I I've not combined them yet. <laughs> so eventually, that might happen, but. The livery designer takes a long time to work with, so you just... Uh, not today. Not today. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of working on this thing. We're going to fly it, and we're going to have a good time, and I'm not going to remember all those tragic ha accidents that I've just been a part of. But, of course, before we do, um, we have to deal with taking off, and uh, that can be a little bit of a challenge at the moment, um, because... I, I don't know how to deal with this this wing. I've done my bestest to uh, to make a plane that doesn't deal with it too badly, and I found that honestly, just beansing it at a hundred percent and just just full no 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 go oh, wow. Okay, maybe that approach wasn't the best. <laughs> we we'll try about thirty percent this time, and hopefully. We don't have to worry too much. Just give it a little bit of right. No, stop it. Stop it. Behave. 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 No. Why are you doing this? <laughs> what is it doing? Stop. There we go. Right. <laughs> Damn it. How do you design planes? How does it... How do you do it? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Up into the air. Stop it. Stop going that way. Stop going that way. Stop rolling. There. Oh my goodness me. Okay, we're in the air. Goodness. <laughs> oh, it's it's hard stuff. This piloting malarkey. Honestly, I swear. <laughs> I swear. Have I got worse at designing planes, or has that got harder? I. <laughs> we're in the air now. I don't intend to take off again anytime soon. Um. <laughs> So here we are, and I think it looks pretty good in the air. We got this obviously not no longer a parasol wing. We've got this gull wing configuration, um, which I think is quite interesting. Like not many planes you saw in World War II had this proper gull wing. You had the inverted gull wing of the Corsair. You had the uh, Polish fighters at the start of World War II, but very little had this. And to be fair, during the design process of this plane. Uh, it was kind of evident why. As you can see, we have exposed and non-retractable landing gears. Um, there's nowhere to put the gear, like the engines here, and if this retracts in, like I can cut a hole here, but that that's all the guts of the engine. So that, like, if unless they fold back here, 
but there's no good way to get that to happen smoothly within flyouts engine that there, there, there's it was it was a nightmare so they're just they're just kind of dangling um <laughs> it's it's a lot more drag but uh, ultimately I, I think that's kind of acceptable um but this, the, you know, the, the top speed of this thing still isn't awful. We've got uh, an equivalent of like a, a a Merlin in here. We've got about 1,180 horsepower, I think. It's like 880 kilowatts or something. Um, I don't exactly know the conversion off the top of my head. Uh, and as you can see, we've got three bombs, which I've not measured um before you ask i'm I, i'm going off 500 250 um 250s on the wings and then 500 on the fuselage but that could be completely wrong um i have no idea and uh we're, we're, we're probably just gonna spawn in a tank and try and hit it with the bombs uh it probably won't kill the tank but uh it would be fun if it does so yeah why don't we do that now Okay, our tank is all the way over there, so we're going to make our way, provided that we don't hit this mountain. We are really struggling with the climb here. We've had to be at a pretty high angle of attack this entire time, laden with bombs, but uh, there's a lot of lift going on on this thing, actually. You know, we can we can still float around quite comfortably at like 200 kilometers an hour, which is, you know, it's nice to see. And whereas originally the really, really sleek fuselage of the original Cardinal uh, kind of had the energy... It kind of had hurricane, kind of spitfirey vibes. Something about the green, I think, uh, and this like I've moved the coolant to here so that we can have the drop tank and bomb. I'm using the fuel from my bomb. That's not meant to happen. Uh, <laughs> uh, that that kind of gives me yak vibes, to be entirely honest. So maybe this should have been Russian at the end of the day, but oh well. Uh, yeah, bear with me. I'm gonna make a short 26 kilometer flight, and we're gonna go bomb a tank. <laughs> so flying over here has given us a little bit of an opportunity to just beans it in a straight line for a while uh, we're not at a hugely high altitude um, but as you can see 418 kilometers an hour isn't like spectacular for the era of this plane but given that it's meant to be a kind of light attack close air support kind of deal that's not too awful I don't think um, you know it, it's kind of like fighter bomber speeds I, I i feel yeah maybe uh let me know if you think that's quick whether you think it's slow i don't know <laughs> okay we're finally closing in on the tank over here it's taken a fair while and uh fair warning uh, i have bound bombs to space which does mean i will fire my guns as i drop my bombs but uh, uh you know that could be worse fates now i'm really hoping he's not directly on the side of this hill because that's going to make aiming the bombs quite a lot harder. Ideally, he's at the bottom of the valley, which uh, I think he is. Maybe just, no, oh, just on the bottom of the hill, I think. Okay, that could be worse. That could definitely be worse. <laughs> now, we have absolutely no aiming assistance on these bombs. We are entirely going off how I think they're going to fall. Um, so we're going to go in dive on this guy because that's the only real way we're going to get accuracy okay i want to drop soon it's they're going to fly quite away but uh maybe about there maybe uh, if we keep watching oh that wasn't too bad actually that wasn't too bad at all i think realistically that would have caused some damage if those were if those actually uh, worked <laughs> for lack of a better term uh, I think I think that would have done some decent damage. So, fairly happy with that. And now, obviously, since we're no longer bomb laden, uh, we can uh, have a look, see what our top speed is like on the uh, on the way home. And we are, we're never going to kill like an M1 Abrams with these little puny machine guns, but uh, yeah, it was worth a try. <laughs> you survive this time, tank. Uh, you just wait till I got some hydropods. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you know, we got the mounts for them. In theory, you could mount a, a hydropod to this plane. It just wouldn't be hugely thematically accurate. Right, well, let's gain a little bit of altitude. Uh, I'm going to do quite the aggressive climb, and hopefully, uh, I want to I want to see if we can crack like 450 kilometers an hour, maybe in a straight line at like let's say 3,000 meters. That I think would that would be me happy with the speed of this plane. So my measure for uh, climbing tends to be like what angle can a plane climb while maintaining like 280 kilometers an hour i, d I don't know why that's just what it was in war thunder and 
12 degrees for a plane of this era, I don't think that's too bad. I think that's all right, honestly. Um, so I, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Little climb done. We shall now continue to accelerate for as long as it takes to hit <laughs> the top speed possible. We're, we're just praying for a number somewhere around 455-ish. That would be that would be lovely. Okay, well, no such luck. Uh, we're topping out here at about 424, and the uh, the wind isn't exactly uh, n slowing us down. That, that's kind of half of a tailwind there, so... Well, that's a bit of a shame, but I guess that's what you get when, yeah, your aerodynamics aren't, um, spectacular. Uh, <laughs> oh well. Um, well, yeah, let's bring her in for a landing and, uh, report back that, uh, turns out parasol wing, not the way to go. <laughs> now look at this dive speed. <laughs> Realistically, uh, we would have ripped our wings Probably about now, if this was a real plane, but, uh, you know, no no such worries in flyouts, so we can just pull up and, uh, no problems. <laughs> in fact, that reminds me, how many Gs can we pull at this speed? Oh, d yeah, <laughs> nearly 20 for a second there. Yeah, that's, that's quite good. It turns, it turns quite well. <laughs> also, actually, I'm, I'm remembering all of the things right now. Fun little quirk, because the wings are so high, normally when you apply roll, you, uh, rudder, you get quite a lot of roll as well, but because the wing's so high and the center of lift, therefore, is so high, you get very little roll for the rudder input you put in. So you can kind of rudder your way around, and it feels really, really strange. <laughs> Okay, enough climbing around. Let, let's let's get her on the ground. Hopefully, not crash. And uh, yeah, we can have a bit of a bit of a report to uh, HQ. Like, <laughs> hmm, maybe we should uh, maybe we should develop the uh, low wing version of this plane rather than the high wing version. <laughs> right, in we come for landing here. Uh, now we do have to be a little careful because of the crosswind here, um, and we might just get this yep that problem uh whenever we try and land whatever that is it seems to be happening at the moment um i still don't have any definitive answers uh, i get told that it's like a physics thing then some people say it's a bug then some people say it's because of the wings not having enough thickness and then some people say it's because you need to put some twist on it i don't know i've not received a definitive answer and uh i don't know if i ever will <laughs> but you know what we landed uh we're alive mission success we nearly hit the tank i think that has gone startlingly well and i think this plane is looking seriously cool so let me know if you agree, and if you do, please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe, because that's all for today. Uh, we will be making another video featuring this aircraft, hopefully fairly soon, uh, which will be the low-wing development of it. I was going to do them both in the same video, but uh, time has uh, got really away from me this week. Uh, but uh, yeah, right. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you in the future for more stuff like this. And goodbye! And as always, a huge thank you to this channel's patrons, Ambrose, Cam Jerome 135, Cody M, Vaughn, Gamma 929, Sad Cat, Jack Not Unk, Just Casuals T6201, Last Eleven, 11, Mildly Invested, Nicholas K, Relax Panda, Rules for Bokken, Ryan Brody, Ryan Brody, Terror, The Kinesian Emperor, Worth Circle, Zarashime, and Zite Wolverine. Thank you so much for your support.